And I treated His precious grace so carelessly Each time He forgives What if He relives The agony felt on that tree Every time I feel And he knew the crowd cry crucified And I know sin in pain Then I know I've got to change Just can't bear the thought of hurting sing this morning, but Brother Jamie, he asked me about it, and I thought, well, I hadn't got a song, but then I was back there, and uh, I forgot I had left one for Julie, and so, and Chris talked me into it. He said, I love that song. It's an old song, and y'all probably gonna know it. It's a real peppy song, and I ain't practiced it, so don't just overlook me, but uh, that old song, Ain't No Grave, gonna hold this body down. <laughs> Yes, yes. Ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down When I hear that trumpet sound Gonna get up out of that 
that ground Cause there ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down Well, meet me, meet me, Jesus Meet me in the middle of the air I'm gonna rise to meet my Lord Gonna say goodbye down here There ain't no grave Gonna hold my body down Put your feet on the land and see Don't you blow that trumpet game Cause until you hear from me I'm going down to the river Gonna bury my knees in the sand I'm gonna holler high hopes Santa Till I reach that promised land Ain't no way You can lay this body down But on that first resurrection morning I'm coming up out of that ground There ain't no grave good stuff. Amen. That's good stuff. Thank the Lord. Back off of this here a little bit. Got me a little hot on this one, I think. Let's see here. All right. All right, children's church being dismissed. Oh, it sure is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. I tell you what, that uh, she took me back uh, many years ago singing that song, uh, El Bethel Baptist Camp Meeting. I never will forget it. Uh, Dr. Ed Maccabee was 
preaching that week, and Kenneth Ridings was preaching the other week. Oh, we always had back-to-back two weeks. We'd have a week of one pastor, and another one would preach and the next week. And I remember an, an elderly woman. She didn't have any music or anything, but she got up and she sang, Ain't No Grave Gonna Hold My Body Down. And the way she sung it, and the power of the Holy Ghost got on that woman. You could tell she believed what she was singing. And we shouted that place down. I mean, it was unbelievable. I, people running and uh, shouting and praising God. And I, thought, I thought Ed Maccabee was going to stomp a hole through the concrete. And I mean, it was, it was powerful. One of the most powerful meetings I've been in in my lifetime. And I want to say I miss those kinds of meetings where the power of the Holy Ghost would move among His people. There was a reason behind that. There's a reason behind those kinds of happenings. Now I want you all to stay with me this morning. There was a significant reason for those kinds of happenings. Uh, you, you might say, well, what, you might ask, well, what was the reason? Um, people had a different mindset back then. Now, I'm talking 30 something years ago, I'm not talking yesterday. Uh, it was different. There was some difference back then. Now, God hasn't changed. But this country and these things that are going on in it, uh, God has been very, very displeased with what has been going on. Now, I do believe, as it's already been mentioned, that God is pleased with our Supreme Court ruling. And I thank God for, yes, say amen. God is pleased with that. And I thank the Lord for it. We give Him the glory for it. God was the one that overturned it. He worked through those people. And that's how God works. And in His timing, these things happen. People have been praying. There's something been going on. There's a shaking that's been going on uh, among God's people. People have been praying and meeting with God and trusting God. And I mean, as our pastor used to say, it bombarding the throne of grace. They've been drawing close to God. And that's what it takes. That's what it's going to take if uh, anything's going to happen uh, of any significance. And I, I want to mention uh, again uh, the reason. Let's, let's look at, I want to look at the reason why uh, we experience what we just experienced. I, I, loved, I loved it when Sister Doris stood up and shouted like that a while ago. I can remember seeing those old white-headed saints back years ago taking them handkerchiefs and woo, just shouting it out. Uh, those times you don't forget. And uh, thank God that we've got a few lingering around. They're not all gone. And God's raising some up. Say amen right there. He's raising a few up in the midst of the mess that we're in. But I, I, this morning, I do want to go ahead and forewarn you, dealing with the issue, the problem, the reason why that we haven't seen the moving, the manifestation of the power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost like we have in days gone by is because there's problems down at the church house. There's problems among God's people. 
And the scripture gives us one particular problem that uh, really gives us, it really defines the whole situation. And uh, that, that problem that I'm talking about and fixing to get, get into is the tongue. This tongue. The Bible has some things to say about it. James chapter number 1. I want to begin reading there. And then I want to go further into the third chapter. But I want to just uh, awaken your senses. I want you to listen to God's Word. Now let's ask God this morning to awaken our spiritual senses. Not our, not our natural senses. You've got them. They're, they're, they're operative right now. But you need for the Holy Ghost to move upon you in such a way that your spiritual senses will begin to see and to hear what God has to say. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the privilege to bow in your presence. Lord, we thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that there's no devil in hell that can tear down the things of God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, this morning that the power of the Holy Ghost is present. And Lord, you are here to move and manifest and do what needs to be done to drive back the forces of evil, to hold back the forces of darkness. God, we pray and plead the precious blood of Christ on this service. Lord, we thank you for it this morning. Lord, thank you, Lord, for this request. And Lord, we give you the glory for what you're about to do in our midst. Father, we know that the devil is a defeated foe. And thank God we have the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Have thine own way for Jesus' sake. Amen. James chapter number 1, beginning reading at verse number 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the saints or to uh, the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Now verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now I want you to skip down with me to verse uh, number 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Then verse 26. If any man among you seem... Now I want you to listen to this. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. In other words, it's worthless. It don't have any validity. It doesn't have any value and y'all can be seated. And so he says here, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the father, fatherless and the, and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, I want to go back to that verse number 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, he's not talking to the lost. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. And if you go back to the first verse, he's talking to those who are scattered abroad, greeting. He's talking about those who are under severe, dire persecution. And by the way, anytime you begin to read the book of James, put this in your memory, 
that the book that is written here was written by the half-brother of Jesus. Now, he lived in the home, and he watched Jesus grow up, and they grew up together. And there was times when Mary, probably in a fleshly way, probably looked at James and said, Why can't you be more like Jesus? He's perfect. (laughs) Uh, I mean, really. Now, that's probably what was said to James. And that might be why he's a little uh, stout in his writings. You know, the scholars of our day and days gone by think we don't need the book of James in the Bible. Now, I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but there... Modern scholarship says we don't need... You want to know why they say that? Because it's eating them alive. The book of James will... Listen, this little book has got more power in it. It will convict you of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. The reason they want to get rid of it is because they don't want to hear it. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. And you know this is the truth if you've read the book of James. If you haven't, I encourage you, really, I mean, take you some time and read it. Proverbs chapter number 18 and verse 7 and 8 said, The fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the uttermost parts of the belly. The words of a talebearer. Hmm. I, I mean, have you ever just noticed certain folks in the church? That all, I mean, they, they've got to talk about somebody, and they've got to talk about something and keep something going all the time. I mean, somebody's got to, I mean, it's just going to happen. You know why? Because they don't know how to bridle their tongue. An unbridled tongue, if I could title this message, I would title it, Beware of the Unbridled Tongue. The Bible here says in the 26th verse of chapter 1, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. This man's belief system is worthless. It don't mean anything. And by the way, the greatest actors are not in Hollywood. Now, I I really had to ask God. I said, God, do you really want me to preach this? And he said, yes. It's a must. The greatest actors are not in Hollywood. I mean, it's not The Rock. He's not the greatest actor. I remember years ago when it was said of Alan Alda that he was the highest paid actor in all of Hollywood. Some of y'all can probably remember that. And really, who cares who's the highest paid actor in all of Hollywood? The greatest and the most prolific actors are where we are this morning. I mean professionals who have never been to an acting class or have never looked upon the stage of Broadway. I'm talking about folks that come to the house of God and put on the dog and shout it out. And when they walk out, they start talking like hell itself. I mean, I see them at work. Deacons. People that go to church. People that are church goers. Yeah, I go to church. I'm a deacon down at my church. We, we didn't have to know that. I don't care. 
doesn't matter if you're a deacon. If that's what you are, you're a servant. You're nothing more. You're nothing more. Let's define what a deacon is. He's a servant. And so is the pastor. And so are you. We're all to be servants of Jesus Christ. And the tongue among all of our members, James said some strong things about it. In the third chapter, he said this, my brethren, be not many masters knowing that, ye, that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Now listen. For, if in, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, he is a perfect man or a mature man and able also to bridle the whole body. Now listen to this illustration. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Now that's, that's, one, that's one little illustration. We put bits in the horse's mouth. And I begin to pray. I said, Lord, tell me what the bit is in the significance of the spiritual realm to the child of God in this scripture. Amen. The bit that goes into the mouth of a child of God is the Word of God. God, and, and listen... The one who bridles the tongue that is in your mouth is the Holy Ghost. You and I do not have the ability to bridle our tongue. We don't have the ability to tame our tongue. If you read on down in the scripture, he says in verse number 8, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. I mean, of all things that man can tame and has tamed, all the beasts of the, of the field and the fish in the water, and so on and so forth, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. No man can do it. Now, if we think we can, you go ahead and try and you'll figure out it won't take you long to figure out that you don't have that kind of power. You just, uh, uh, you just slam your hand in the trunk of your car or in the door of your car. Or you slip and miss and hit the nail and hit the other nail. And your mouth will be, you'll be trying to catch everything you're trying to, it's coming. You'll be doing all you can to catch it. The only one who can tame that is the Holy Spirit. And He lives in us. And I'm going to tell you, it's took years, and it takes a long time, my friend, for God to develop with inside the child of God how to bridle the tongue. I want to tell you, you know what? You know what's sad? I'll tell you what's really sad. I, and I experienced this as a pastor. I pastored for 20 years. I used to be Jeff's pastor. And I, I want to tell you what's sad. And some of y'all may be guilty of this, and if you are guilty of this, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. You need to get up on this altar and ask God to forgive you. Yeah, listen, you need to hear this. I mean, there's some folks will run right up to the preacher, but just right before he preaches, and put some kind of gossip in his ear. Well, where's so-and-so? Well, they ain't even here. Why, why aren't they here? Why are you worried about somebody else? You don't, you, hey, you're not God and you don't know what somebody else may be going through. 
You don't know why they're not here. I mean, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is God knows where you are and God knows what you're about. And our hearts need to be clean. See, here's the problem. Folks come up to the altar, Brother Darrell, and they'll get, ask for a little bit of cleansing. Don't need to just ask for a little bit of cleansing. You need to ask God to make you clean. Lord, I want to do better. Well, you can't do no better than what He's done. He's already done what needed to be done, and it is done, and all we need to do is to get to where we agree with it being done. But our tongues, boy, I'll tell you, it's so, isn't it so easy to find in other people what do you think they ought to be doing that you're not even doing yourself? Well, they ought to be, you know, I don't understand why they, I don't understand this, I don't understand that. Well, it may not be, listen, it's not meant for you to understand everything. I'm going to tell you what, it's your business. And what's my business is to stay right with God personally. Man, I, I know for a fact, I mean, I could feel the heat as a pastor when folks would be chewing me up and spitting me out, Miss Doris. I, I, I can remember that. Y'all are following me, ain't you? I hope you can follow this, amen. Chewing me up and spitting me out. If you're chewing God's man up and spitting him out, you need to get up here and ask God to forgive you. That's right. If you've got an ought against your brother, don't talk to your sister about your brother. Talk to your brother and get right with him. Amen. And then come and offer your gift. I know this ain't what folks want to hear, but I can tell you now, me and you both need to hear it. It'd straighten up a lot of mess if folks would listen real good and humble down just a little bit. That's right. You know it's right. I mean, you go off and you get together and you start talking. And as you start talking, you know what he says? How great a matter a little fire kindleth. It don't take much. Just a little spark to start a, a, a fire. That You know, that's what happened in the great Chicago fire. You know, you know what happened? You know what actually happened? What, what happened? Tell us. And, and knocked it over. I'm talking the cow was the one that kicked the lantern over. And it's, I mean, millions and billions of dollars, millions of home, I mean, millions of, of, of lives, totally transformed in a moment. You see, it's, it's called the chain reaction. One person says this, and you know, y'all know this, we did this in school. One, you tell one to say one thing and the next person says another thing. By the time you get over here, it's not, it ain't even close. It's nowhere close to where it should be. God help us. God help us. I tell you what, it's dangerous to put your mouth on God's man. If God's touched a man and he's anointed that man, it's dangerous to put your mouth on him. It's dangerous to put your mouth on either one of us. You know, I mean, we're playing, you can't be playing these games. God's not pleased with it. He's not. Now the question is, how do we allow the Holy Spirit to bridle our tongue? 
Let, let's look at it. I, I want to just give you a couple of things and I, I'll be done. I, I can see right now our wagons are loaded and the wheels are beginning to wobble. Yes, sir. That's right. Because some of you know you need to go ahead and get on up here and pray. And if you stiffen your neck, God might just break it. You better be careful. <laughs> you say, but he's merciful, but he don't play. God don't play games. He ain't in the game playing business. Well, I'm going to tell you, I love every one of you. There ain't a soul in here I don't love. But I didn't come to preach today to be your friend. I came to help you. Man, I, I'm going to tell you, you can go in, you can just about find a church anywhere around that you can go and hear them, let, hear them tell you what you want to hear. We don't need that. Friend, we need to hear what God has to say that will clean up our lives. And, and, and I know we preach Christ and Him crucified, but you've got to get there. You've got to get to the place. You've got to get there, friend. You can't be tiptoeing around the cross. Friend, God's not pleased with that. Listen. The scripture here is very plain. Let, let me give you something here to help you. In Colossians chapter number 3, verse 16, let the word of Christ, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. But that's getting it done. That's how, this is how you begin to walk in the Spirit. This is how He begins to bridle your tongue. I mean, what are you going to do? I never will forget this. Me and my uncle went fishing one time. And we went many times before the Lord took him. But... I don't know, I was just in a, in, it was like I just stayed in the Spirit. For, you know, I just always praising God. I mean, all the time. I was just praising God. We went catfishing. I was down there catfishing with him. And I'd catch one, I'd say, praise God. And he wouldn't catch nothing. I'd catch nothing, I'd say, praise God. And then I'd catch nothing, I'd say, praise God, Hallelujah. I'm catching them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Finally, my Uncle Paul said, Ain't no way I'm going to catch up. You're praising God too much. <laughs> if we'd praise God more than we mouth about our brothers and our sisters and shout it out and give God glory, we wouldn't have this kind of problem. You're talking about the Holy Ghost moving in on us. See, the, the dirt's got to be cleaned out. David said, create in me a clean heart. Oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. Lord have mercy. God help us. That he would clean us up. Lord help us. Well, I've got, if you look at this chapter, you'll see, and I got this outline from Adrian Rogers, the influence of the tongue. The tongue does, it has power to influence. The iniquity of the tongue. What does the tongue, he said it's, a, it's, a, it's full of deadly poison. It's, it's full of sin. Full of sin. Notice how he says it. In verse 6, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and setteth, and notice this, and it is set on fire of hell. Friend, I want to tell you, this tongue can be, a, be used for direction, 
or destruction. We can give direction or we can bring destruction. And friend, you don't have to put a knife in somebody's back to kill them. That tongue can do a lot of damage. Let, let me say this to you, and I want you to hear this. And I'm about done. Because I'm telling you, I, I need this just as much as y'all. You are no more like the devil than when you're slandering someone and defaming their character. You are no, let me repeat that. You are no more like the devil than when you are slandering somebody and defaming their character. And I wonder how many folks in the church house sit around and do this, get on the telephone. It used to be telephone, it's cell phone now. So you get a little get a little bit offended down here at the house of God, and then you pick the cell phone up and you call your friend and you start putting poison in them. Well, so and so did this. I didn't like the way so and so did that. So and so shouldn't have done me that way. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Grow up. Quit being a baby. Glory to God. I mean, that's silly. Young people are smarter than that. Oh, that must have meant I was speaking to old people. <laughs> hey, that's true. It's a fact. If it's you fits, put it on. I mean, I, I'm not saying this to hurt you. If you think that, you have lost your ever-loving mind. Friend, I'm telling you, it's not, it is totally not of God for you to get on that phone and start running down your brothers and sisters in Christ that you go to church with. Or anybody else for that matter. I, I, I they they come to work. I, I'm and I I done told this boy. I, I've had a guy at work. He's complain. I told him I don't want to hear that. Amen, brother. Amen. I mean, he's complaining, complaining. You know what? I don't hear it no more. When I mean, I put down my foot and I said, "Don't complain to me," because I got enough. I don't want to hear it. Can I get one, amen? amen? Just one. I mean, I do not want to hear your complaining. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a shame. I'm talking grown people. I, I, now, I've said this. Now, this might... This, some of your eyebrows are going to rise up on this, what I'm about to say. I, I really got to close this message before I get myself in a mess. But I, but I do want to tell you, I, 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 told, I told my wife, I said, for some of them men I work with, I, I want to take them some women's clothes. Because <laughs> they're worse than women. And you say, now, now well, ladies, now, wait a minute now. They say, now this is statistic-wise, we speak at least, now, as far as the male, speaks at least 20,000 words per day. The female, it is said, speaks 30,000. And the 10,000 that we're dealing with, with the 20,000, after the man gets home, the 10,000 fall on him. And that's okay. But it's true. But I will tell you, some men are far worse than women. I want, I want to throw up. I, under God, I, 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 I'm serious. I told, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to take some panties down there and some lace and just, just start handing them out. Be a man. Quit complaining. 
Glory to God. Enjoy. It. Listen, you might as well. You're going to be here eight hours. Just hush and get her done. Amen. Do what you got to do. Well, I know this ain't popular, but I'm going to tell you, it's, it is popular in the heart of God. God wants to deal with the sin that we let get in our hearts. If I've got a problem with Jeff back there, I ought to have enough grace to love him Amen. and go to him and say, Brother Jeff, I am, I've got a problem, and I want to talk to you about this. Can we talk to you? Can I talk to you? Can we get this right? I tell you what happened closing. I'm, I promise you, I'm closing right here. When I pastored down at Midway, there was a man in that church. Me and him, we fussed and fought. I mean, I was just a young preacher. He was an older man. And he was, you know, it's a family-run church, just like a lot of them are. And me and him, we butted heads. I mean, butted heads every time you turned around. I was, and I was hard-headed, buddy. I mean, young, thought I knew something. I didn't know nothing. He knew a whole lot more than me. And I, and I realize that now. But I look back, and I remember on one particular night, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. It was on a Wednesday night after church. God said to me, you need to call that man, tell him to come to the church, and you need to get right. Amen. I called him. He came up to the church. Me and him got on that altar and wept our Praise way to God. Calvary. Amen. And you know what? We never had another problem. Not another. We never, got, never had another fuss. Never had another argument. Never got upset with each other. Friend, when you get it right, get it right. Amen. And right here is the place to do it. Brother Roger, if you would just play. If you've got something going on in your heart this morning, and I, I know sometimes we preach long, but I want to tell you, it's worth it to deal with it. Amen. If you've got a brother or sister in this church you need to go to, you ought to go to them. And you ought to do it now. Amen, Amen. I mean right now. I tell you what, it, it, what it'll do is it'll free you. It'll free you. Yes, it will. The bitter one is the one who's in bondage. It's not the other person. And friend, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. My grandfather said this, I know it was a philosophy. But it was scriptural. He said, if you can't say anything good about anybody, just don't say nothing at all. Amen. And that's the way it ought to be. If you can't, just don't say nothing good at all. If you don't say nothing, if you can't say nothing good, just don't say nothing at all. Best just not do it. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we're going to give an account of every idle word when we stand before God. Serious business. Well, I, I can see this morning that it, it, God's got some wheels turning. Hey, some wheels turning. He's got your wheels turning this morning. These folks left this church mad. They Mad. You can't leave one church wrong, go to another and right. I don't care who you are. Mad. That's right. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Let's pray. Father. Lord, I know this is not popular. This is not what people want to hear, but it's what you have given me. And Lord, I've tried my best to be obedient and to just give to these dear people something that'll help them. Lord, I remember back 
all those many years ago when you showed me this text. and So many times, Lord, I'll fail again. There's going to be times we're going to fail. We're going to stumble. Lord, I ask you to bridle our tongue. I pray for the Holy Ghost to bridle the tongues in this church that the people of God would truly be in, as, as it's already been said, Linda's already, in unity, that we would be unified, that we wouldn't have an ought against our brother or our sister, but that, dear God, Christ would be exalted, that you'd be glorified. God, look into us, Lord, and cleanse us. Clean us up and make us more like Jesus. And we'll give you the glory for Jesus' sake. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you for your kind attention.